Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Edmund O'Brien in Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we take pride in presenting a story by one of America's most distinguished writers, Stephen Vincent Benet, whose death at the early age of 45 was a tragic loss to our time. Already, however, he had written several stories which have earned for him an honored place in the history as well as the literature of America, for Benet wrote with deep feeling about the growth and greatness of the nation and it is his interpretation of the virile threads that made the pattern of America which give his stories their distinctive flavor. He loved to write about the plain people of America, their day-to-day -day deeds and their heroes. Tonight we have chosen a story called O'Halloran's Luck, in which the atmosphere of old Boston and the expanding West are happily combined. And another thing that is particularly appropriate for us to remind ourselves is that Benet was one of the first American writers to write directly for the radio and some of his contributions to this medium have made radio history. Well, we're now about ready to start, and we're privileged to present Edmund O'Brien as O'Halloran. Frank Goss, will you take over for a moment, please? Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Ladies and gentlemen, for a Christmas greeting your friends will long remember, make your selections now from the complete Hallmark collection on display at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. Whatever your taste, whatever your budget, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. And on the back of every one is the identifying hallmark that says, You cared enough to send the very best. Hallmark Playhouse, starring Edmund O'Brien in Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck. <laughs> Tim O'Halloran was my grandfather. To Boston he came by steerage, just after the middle of the last century, a farm boy in his early 20s, braving the Atlantic to come to the new world to regain the long-lost O'Halloran luck and make Kitty Malone his wife. As the shore of Boston came in sight, and then its streets and houses, Tim wondered which of the precious buildings held his darling Kitty. Kitty has a fine talent. Yeah, she was never meant to be a servant, girl. Married to Mr. Boyle, she won't be. He's got money in the bank. God willing, it'll be a fine match, old Kitty and Mr. Boyle. Come in. You! What brings you here? Tim O'Halloran. It's me, all right, Tim O'Halloran. Only two hours off the boat and straight to the Malone's I came. You shouldn't have barged in like this. But Mrs. Malone, sure I've crossed the great ocean to have Kitty for me wife. Your wife? Old Kitty? Of course. Since we were children, back in Clonmelly, everyone knew we were for one another. Of all the brazen devils, you, Tim O'Halloran, without so much as a penny to your name or a job talking about marriage. Tim, Tim O'Halloran. Oh, Kitty. Kitty at last. Oh, Tim, Tim. Kitty Malone, have you no shame? And with your intended Mr. Boyle sitting in the parlor. Show him to me, Kitty. I'll toss him to the street. Not so fast, me bucko. Father, please. Let me talk to Tim alone. That you may do, Kitty. So long as you tell O'Halloran straight out, you've got a chance to marry Mr. Boyle and end your days of slaving as a house servant on Beacon Street. Come alone. Don't look at me like that, Tim. It's they who want I should marry Mr. Boyle. But you, I... I don't understand. A, a servant girl? Slaving with mop and bucket in the new world? It's true. I'm a maid servant. 
The new country isn't like what they said back in Clonmelly. There's work to do. Hard work. Work? People work here in America? Sure, didn't the section of the parish home tell us the streets of Boston were paved with gold and, and riches were to be had for the asking? They were wrong, Tim. There's no gold here without work. Then, then you mean a man must have a job? Aye, a job, Tim. But there's lots of work, darling. Well, if that's the case with you here in Boston, but I'll there, go... there are no jobs in Boston, Tim. You'll have to go to the prairies. The prairie? Out on the prairies, them that's building the railroads is hungry for strong Irish arms. And leave you here with Mr. Boyle? I'll wait for you, Tim O'Halloran. I promise. You'll find O'Halloran's luck out there and come back for me. O'Halloran's luck. It may be hiding out there on the prairie... You'll wait, Kitty? I'll wait, Tim. I promise you. I'll go then, Kitty, to the prairie for a job building the railroads. Goodbye, Tim, darling. I'll pray for you. I'll be back for you, Kitty, dear, when I find O'Halloran's luck. <laughs> Kitty Malone. And so I am, O'Toole, to get the misery of the freezing prairie out of me brain. I've squandered a year of my life in this murderous prairie lugging rails. And what have I got to show for it? Give me three cards and I'm raising you ten dollars. I'll see you. That's thirty-four dollars you're betting, O'Halloran. Three queens. McGinnis? Kings, O'Halloran. Four fat kings. I told you, Tim, you'd never get back to Boston now. Well, tonight I know it's true. Or Halloran's luck will never be found. I'm walking back to camp. Walking? Why, you'll freeze to death. And what if I do freeze? There'll be no more torturing thoughts at night and breaking my back by day. Ah, poor O'Halloran. The black Irish mood comes over him when he's wanting Kitty Malone. Tim O'Halloran, you're a fool of a man for all your strong back and arms. Not all the pukas, banshees, and leprechauns of Ireland could find your luck for you here, you idiot. And Kitty will not wait forever. Come in the room. What's that? Come in the room. A woman out here on the prairie. Come in the room. There it is again. It's not the cry of wolves. What's this? What's this? A little shoe. A shoe with a silver buckle. Sure, if this was happening in the old country, I'd swear it was a, a leprechaun shoe and start looking for the pot of gold. I trouble you from a drop, a shoe. Be the piper that played before Moses. Am I daft? I thought I heard a voice speaking. Oh, you did. I'm here, over here, you gum in the frozen bush. Help me out. A child. But your voice is old. Uh, a child with this long white beard. And do these ancient clothes and shoemaker's boots mean nothing to you? By faith and belief, you're a leprechaun. You, you've come to find O'Halloran's luck for me. Uh, you're a man, stop your silly talk and lift me out of here. There, I've touched my leprechaun. 
Now then, where'll I find my pot of gold, worshipful leprechaun? Pot of gold? <laughs> and do you think I'd be freezing in this prairie if I had a pot of gold? But your worship, by all the legends of Ireland, a leprechaun should show his mortal finder a pot of gold. Look at me tattered clothes, O'Halloran, and these cheeks hollow with hunger, and stop bothering me about your pot of gold. Well, here, here, get inside my coat. Thank you, Halloran. I know you're a clan melly man now. Be your kindness. Tell me. Tell me how you came to be here on the freezing prairie of America. It is a sad story that befell me. I was lazy Brian. I hated work and lay abed with six tall harpers playing for me. St. Patrick laid a curse upon me for me laziness and changed me into a leprechaun. Until I serve the servant of servants. Serve the servant of servants? It's centuries I've been looking, but never yet have I met the servant of a servant. Until I do, I'll never be free. But tell me, what are you planning to do with me? You're a great responsibility. But since you asked for help, you must have it. Come, I'll take you back to the railroad camp. A leprechaun in a railroad camp? Well, let's see you now. I, I could say you were my boy, Nevue Rory. Nevue Rory? With this long beard? I'll take care of that. Come back to the camp, the bunkhouse, and my razor. <laughs> hold still, Rory. Hold still, or this razor will be the end of you. There. There, smooth as a baby. A few more strokes. Be quiet now, will you? Be quiet before you wake the foreman. Uh, what's the crime about, O'Halloran? Good evening, O'Toole. Who's that, would you? A boy. Oh, I see. But that face. Aye, true. He's been sick. Crossing the prairie alone from the old country. And he's wanting work. Work he wants. Me? I never said Shut anything. Shut your mouth, Rory. We're short of a water boy, O'Halloran. And you'll sign him in, O'Toole? I'll watch out for him with the crew. Bring him out tomorrow. Now keep quiet. Good night. Work? You am a dawn. I told you I hate work, despite it. You heard me, six back-breaking days of work each week, and on Sunday you wash your shirt. Oh, never. Not me. It's not for work I came from Ireland, O'Halloran. You'd rather be with the wolves, Rory? Oh, uh, no, 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 not that. But then I'll drill, you terrier. Drill. <laughs> In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck, starring Edmund O'Brien. How would you like to have one of America's foremost artists paint your Christmas card this Christmas? A card so unusual that your friends will show it to all who visit them during the holiday season. In this year's Gallery Artist series, Hallmark craftsmen working with 50 foremost artists have created a unique and exclusive collection of priceless art from which you are invited to make your personal selection. Among the many to choose from are colorful winter scenes by Grandma Moses, the farm wife you read about in last week's copy of Life magazine, the one who became a famous painter when she was 76, and whose painting philosophy is, what's the use of making something to hang on the wall if it isn't pretty? This grand old lady of American art has had a lifetime of Christmas experiences in her beloved New England. And in these fine hallmark cards, she recaptures the childhood excitement that most grown-ups only recall. The first winter snow, the steeple churches, the red barns, the horse-drawn sleighs. You'll find a variety of delightful Grandma Moses cards to choose from to have imprinted with your name or to purchase by the box for your personal signature. And remember, these are hallmark cards. When your friends receive them and look on the back, as you did... They'll see the hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. And now we return to James Hilton and Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck, starring Edmund O'Brien. Big Tim O'Halloran has left his sweetheart, Kitty Malone, in Boston to seek his fortune working on the railroad being built across the prairie. Instead of finding his luck, O'Halloran encounters a leprechaun who needs help. 
shaving off the hungry leprechaun's long white beard, O'Halloran dresses him as a small boy, passes him off as his nephew, and gets him a job as a water boy. Riding on the rails, not building them. Enjoy it while you can, Rory. The foreman's waiting for us out at the end of the line. We're to start the new section. <laughs> That's going to be misery, the new section. Now, how do you know it's going to be misery? Well, didn't I tell you? Those fools of surveyors laid out the new section of the line where there's hidden springs of water under the right of way. Water? And when we start to dig in the roadbed, oh, oh, there'll be the devil to pay. And how do you know about the hidden springs, Rory? Ah, and why wouldn't I know? Me that for centuries has listened to the waters running underground. True, true, a leprechaun can hear hidden water. But, but what shall we do? Shift the new line half a mile to the west. And you'll strike a hard roadbed. Here we are, Rory, the new section. All out and start clearing away at the brush. Come on, get him over on O'Halloran. Oh, uh, could I have a word with your tool? It, it may save us some trouble. Trouble? The only kind of trouble I know is the kind O'Halloran makes. Now, in the new section we're starting, there's water, hidden springs under the right of way. Then I suppose you've got a near of a leprechaun to know of such when the engineers have approved it themselves. Mark my words, O'Toole, it's true. There are springs and you'll do well by yourself telling the engineer. I'll do just that. I'll tell him the great clod of an engineer, Tim O'Halloran, told me. Get your shovel into the dirt. You're sure you won't come along with us to the tavern, O'Halloran? I've got to teach Rory his reading and writing, McGinnis. Me? Quiet. I'll slap the words into that thick head of yours. Ready, McGinnis? Good night, O'Halloran. You're getting too steady for good company. What do you mean telling them it's me you're teaching to read? It yourself is learning the words, O'Halloran. Get to bed, you black-tongued rascal. Now, what am I to do? Sit and watch you? You could be thinking of the ways and means of carrying the steel rails faster and easier, like I asked you. Oh, that? Huh, nothing to it. Oh, you're saying you know now. Well, if the engineers would have the steel rails move faster, let them use two donkeys, one at each end, two such beasts can carry five times the load of humans. You, you know whereof you speak, Rob. With me own eyes, didn't I see the donkeys fetch the great stones to the hills of Ireland centuries ago, when the castles were built for the kings? Come in. Oh, Halloran, glad I caught you in. I'm Claney, the engineer. Aye. Right. The foreman told me about your saying our new section was surveyed over Hidden Springs. A clever work, oh, Halloran. You saved the company a lot of time and money. And they should be shown some gratitude? Rory. Uh, me little nephew Rory, Mr. Claney. Well, how do you do, sonny? Oh, Halloran? I want you to take over Gang 5 tomorrow. Gang 5? Well, you mean... That's that... right. You're a foreman from now on. <laughs> I like a man that uses his head. Say, can me nephew come with me? I, I have to look after him. Well, he certainly can. Ah, thank you, sir. Uncle Tim, why don't you tell Mr. Claney how you figured out the way to carry steel rails faster and easier? That's something I want to hear. Go ahead, O'Halloran. <laughs> Torture an infidel. How can you sit there laughing when you know the memory of Kitty hangs like doom on me? <laughs> Quit your wailing and keening, O'Halloran. Uh, <laughs> Just because Kitty's mother wrote you requesting that you do the family a, a great honor and stop writing Kitty letters. <laughs> stop your laughing, you demon. I'm laughing at a gun that had let a cold letter keep him from his love. A railroad man at that. A man with a new contract with pay in his pocket and money in the bank. <laughs> by the piper. But you've hit it right, you queer little creature. It's back to Boston we go in the morning. I'm off to claim Kitty Malone for my wife. Mrs. Malone. Kim O'Halloran. Malone, quick. O'Halloran, oh, what is it you want? Kitty Malone, your daughter. No, not that door. Please, her intended Mr. Byler's in there. Kitty, my darling Kitty. Tim, 
They told me you were dead on the plains of the West. And a great pity he was not. Tim, please, don't hit him. I saw him trying to squeeze your hand, Kitty. You're leaving, Boyle. A bad penny turning up never made a Boyle run off, Mr. O'Halloran. Please, gentlemen, this is my house. Sorry, Mrs. Malone, but it'll all be quiet in a minute. No, don't, Tim! Oh! The police! I'll have the police here on you, Tim O'Halloran. You good-for-nothing laborer. Now Mr. Boyle will never show his face again, never. And he'd better not. The shame of you trying to give your daughter to a horse car conductor. And she might be marrying a, a future railroad president. A railroad president? Oh, Tim. What's he to show for honest talk, I ask? This, Mr. Malone, a new contract. And this bank book? I'm... I'm a railroad man. I knew it, Tim. It's come. You found O'Halloran's luck. Perhaps you'd be more comfortable talking, you and Kitty, <laughs> in the in the kitchen. I'll take care of Boyle. Uh, if Mr. O'Halloran is staying for supper, he's more than welcome. Make a bit of tea for him, Kitty. Tim. Tim, darling. Kitty, I thought this day would never come. Oh, hold me, Tim. Tell me everything that happened. <laughs> the West, Kitty. It's the common place. Oh, don't stop, Tim. Keep talking. It's like a dream. I've told you everything, Kitty, since the day I walked out of here two years ago. Everything. You really found O'Halloran's luck, and by yourself. Who could that be? It's late. Get me in. I'm hungry. Oh, Kitty, darling, uh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you. Hey! Tim, I've been shopping all over Boston. Uncle Tim, who is this child? Uh, Kitty, dear, I, I, I forgot to tell you, this is my nephew Rory that lives with me. How do you do, Rory? Welcome to Boston. Uh, won't you have a bit of cake? Uh, thank you, Kitty, I will. Well, have you made up your mind to marry me, Uncle Tim? Hold your tongue, Let Rory. Let the lad speak his mind. Yes, Rory, it is I that will be your aunt. Ah, sure, now, isn't that good? I'm thinking you'll make a good home for us once you're used to me ways. Rory. Is that the way it's to be, Tim? That's the way it's got to be, Kitty. Rory is, is my responsibility. But you're free to say you'll not have me. Will you live with us, Rory? Well, we'd be glad to have you. Kitty, you're sure? Oh, of course you're sure. Thank you, Kitty Malone, O'Halloran to be. And you're lucky, O'Halloran. For had you denied me then, your luck would have left you. No, the luck will stick to both of you for the rest of your lives. And I'm wanting another piece of cake. Queer lad you are. I'll fetch more cake. I should break you into bits for speaking like that. Huh? Your only nephew? Tell me. Tell me now. Was your wife ever in domestic service? What if she was? Who thinks the worse of that? Oh, not I. For I've learned about mortal labor since coming to this country. It's a noble thing. Do you intend to serve this wife of yours and honor her through the days of your wedded life? That is my intention. Why? Then command me to tie your shoelace. Tie my shoelace, you black-hearted, villainous anatomy. <laughs> Glad for you, Rory. And and will you be going back to Ireland? Oh, or? no, no. Ireland's a fine place, but this new country is bolder. A man's a better chance here. I'm off to the great mines of the West. Some other poor countryman of ours is out there seeking his luck. As you were, O'Halloran. I must go to help him. Oh, there'll be a terrible space in my heart for you. Good day to you, Tim. Not goodbye. Oh, I've not the heart to bear it. No, no. Tis not goodbye, Tim. When you christen your firstborn, I'll be at his cradle. And so with your sons' sons and their sons, 
for O'Halloran's luck has just begun. He... he's gone. But O'Halloran's luck is found for keeps. Kitty, I forgot to tell you the strangest thing of all that happened to me while I was gone. About Rory? Aye, about Rory. It seems one night when I thought you'd gone forever, I was walking all alone down the prairie. That was my grandfather Tim's story of how he found his opportunity in the new world. When he became the president of the railroad, he named his private car the Leprechaun. For that matter, they say that when he took his business trips, a small boyish fellow would turn up from nowhere at some odd stop or other, and he'd be let into the car at once, while the great of the railroad world were kept waiting in the vestibule. And after a while, they say, Sure, they'd be singing from inside the car. In a moment, James Hilton and Edmund O'Brien will return. But first, may I invite you again to see the new Hallmark Christmas cards now on display at the Friendly Store where you buy Hallmark cards. If you prefer to select cards to individually fit each one on your list, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. There are fascinating Hallmark albums from which to select cards for imprinting with your name. And there are the many boxes of assorted Hallmark cards to take care of last-minute additions. Yes, whatever your taste, whatever your budget, there are Hallmark cards you'll take special pride in sending. And remember, when your friends receive them and look on the back, as you did, they'll see the Hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. Now here again is James Hilton. I think you ladies and gentlemen will agree with me that Mr. Edmund O'Brien did a splendid job as O'Halloran in Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck. Mr. O'Brien, on behalf of all those who make Hallmark cards, I want to thank you and Dan O'Hurley, who took the part of the leprechaun, for treating us to such outstanding performances. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. I, I like very much being here with you. You see, you people in the Hallmark Playhouse have set such high standards that you make it very attractive to be here. Uh... I might say, though, that your habit of doing things well doesn't surprise me. Not when I realize that Hallmark had the reputation for fine greeting cards long before there was radio. We are happy indeed if you feel we're carrying on in the Hallmark tradition. And now that you've expressed yourself as liking the things that bear the Hallmark name, we think you'll like what we have in store next week when we present our radio version of Mary O'Hara's memorable story, My Friend Flicker, starring the popular young motion picture actor and winner of a special Academy Award, Claude Jarman, Jr. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Tonight's story was adapted for radio by George Corey, with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our director-producer is Dee Engelback. Edmund O'Brien will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers Technicolor production, Fighter Squadron. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Mary O'Hara's My Friend Flicka, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.